your daughter, Vanella, whom we affectionately call Bunny Jackson Ransom. God calls us to know that even before we called her our own, you called her yours. Help us to understand the deeper, God, that, that these states, this community, really existentially was not her home. Rather, she came from eternity. She came from you. And we celebrate it today because not only did she labor in this vineyard, not only did she touch and embrace our lives, not only did she raise a family, not only did she love us even when we acted as if we were unlovable, not only did she receive us when so oft time she was rejected, and yet, God, to because of your infinite love and compassion for her, for more than eight dedicated decades, decades you let us experience her. And so now, God, We are honored to declare, as the song has already declared, she finished. She's finished with the troubles of the world. And I pray, O oh God, that you'll give to the family and all of us the strength, yea, the courage, to co commend her back to you. For she came from eternity to share with us for 82 years. And now just a few days ago, when she breathed her last here, she went back to be with you in eternity. And so we celebrate the time that we had. And we are honored to know that she's not lost. She's alive forevermore. So, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart feel lonely? And long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion.
We call now on those persons whose names are printed in the program to offer reflections. We're grateful for close family, friends, and the village gathered here to pray, pay tribute to a great life. You may use the lectern here to my right, beginning with Jocelyn Dorsey. Good morning. I am humbly honored in my bunny blue to bring you words from one of the most distinguished artists in residence of the Alliance Theater, author and playwright Pearl Clay, as well as a few remarks of my own. First from Pearl. The first time I met Bunny Jackson Ransom during the summer of 1973, I was a volunteer speechwriter in her husband's first campaign for mayor. She was holding down a full-time job, raising three energetic young children, and running a household that also included the candidate, her always patient mother, assorted friends and extended family. At any given moment, that household was also filled with enough of us excitable staffers to drive any normal woman crazy but not Bunny. She was somehow able to juggle all the aspects of her increasingly complicated life with discipline, determination, courage, confidence, and faith. Whenever things threatened to spin out of control, she called upon her own formidable inner resources to make sure her family was safe, well cared for, and deeply loved those resources would continue to sustain her when the dreams of a whole city swept her husband into the mayor's office and carried her right along with him, hardly even giving her feet time to touch the ground. It was not the life she would have chosen, but she stepped into her role as Atlanta's new African-American first lady with the grace, humor, independent spirit, that came to divine her personal persona for the next five decades. In the midst of it all, she never forgot to make sure the first, last, and always was her family, and that they were safe, well cared for, and deeply, deeply loved. As she joins the ancestors, their lives are the proof of her success in that, her most cherished role. It's unfortunate that sometimes you never really get to know the soul of a person before her passing, but I am grateful that I get to let her children and grandchildren and all of you know what she meant to me. To me, Bunny Jackson Ransom was the professional soulmate. We were kind of like kindred spirits. I think she spotted me and followed me the first time I came to town in 1973 as the first black news anchor at WSV TV. At that time, I was assigned to cover the Honorable Maynard Jackson's first bid for mayor of Atlanta, and we developed a natural friendship as a result. She somehow knew we had the same professional values, honesty, integrity, and yes, tenacity. She admits she was quite a feisty young lady with an ego of her own, but not out of arrogance, but just that she was propelled to achieve. And she did. As the first African-American lady, not only of Atlanta, but a major southern city. So there was no record of what ladies like her did before, because previous ladies were white. And she demanded that she do more than just serve tea, a stereotypical previously defined by other first ladies. And she did, politically, being raised in civil rights from the sit-ins at the lunch counters as a young woman in North Carolina. She was prepared for her work as the first First Lady and a leader in Atlanta's Voters League, the Atlanta League of Women Voters, the Georgia Human Relations Commission, the NAACP Atlanta branch, and nearly 30 years with the National Conference of Mayors, of Black Mayors. But what she's most proud of is her role as the first First Lady, 
was as a confidential advisor to her then husband, the mayor, in community organizing. One idea in particular she says she got from her work as a governmental official with Economic Opportunity Atlanta was the formation of the city's neighborhood planning units, or NPUs, dividing Atlanta into 25 units of citizen advisory councils making recommendations to the mayor and city council on zoning, land use, and planning issues. The NPUs are a political structure that nearly 50 years later is still functioning and is still the official avenue for residents to express their concern for their governments. But for me personally, Bunny Jackson Ransom helped me to rise to community prominence at WSB in her role as head of first class public relations. As editorial and public affairs director at WSB TV, I got the on air credit, but Bunny did the work. She brought the return of the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater to Atlanta nearly 50 years ago, not me in WSB, but she maintained that relationship that still is being promoted right now today in 2023. She brought the famous African-American Ernie Barnes Beauty of the Ghetto art exhibit to Atlanta, allowing me to look like I knew everything about art. And she gave me the interview and allowed me to have an autographed copy of the famous Sugar Shack that just recently sold for $15.3 million. She introduced me to the importance of the Sickle Cell Foundation of Georgia that led WSB to be the longest running fundraiser for that organization through the Sickle Cell 5K. She helped me realize the importance of promoting education of African American children in Georgia through the NAACP Student SAT program. I could go on and on about the projects, but I think you get the idea. And like the Coca-Cola giant, Robert Woodruff, she never complained that she really never got the credit. It was just enough for her to know that she had done what was needed and what was right. So in the words of one of her favorite songs and mine from Mary Mary, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. You broke the chains, now I can lift my hands. And I'm gonna praise you, Bunny Jackson Ransom. I'm gonna praise you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ray Ransom. I'm that ransom up there. <laughs> I'm the one that she made a man of. Taking it from where she left off, Bunny took over her own life with her own business at first class. And she decided to get involved in show business. And one of the first groups that she decided to get involved with was our group that Reggie and I put together called Brick. Um, once we put together the first album, Reggie and I decided that we needed someone to promote us because we had, we really didn't have any PR going. So we contacted Bunny because we knew she had a PR company. And she put together an article of us cooking which I still do today. And uh, that article got us attention from record companies and eventually a, a label that wanted to sign us. And once we got signed by the Bang label, we, they put out a record called, Everybody go on and dance. <laughs> you might have heard it. <laughs> At this point, I want to point out 
that there's a guy who sang that song with me in this audience. Eddie, would you stand up for me, please? And Jimmy Brown, would you stand up for me, please? Y'all see them? I, maybe I can't see. Anyhow, that's how it got started. And then she decided that she loved this part of her life, and music was one of the things she enjoyed. So she got involved in other groups that were starting up trying to make a record. And the next group was the SOS Band. Raouf, would you stand up, please? Is Mary here? There they are. Yeah. That, is that skin back there? Yes, it is. That's the original bass player with SOS Band. Now, he's a preacher now. I'm sure he's a good one because he was a very good bass player, too. And there was uh, one other group that she got involved with, a group called Cameo. <laughs> As you can see, there's a kind of a success trail going on here. So in this time she put her mind into something that she wanted to do, she was dedicated and determined. And she used all of her connections from Washington to California to get all of us off the ground and to get as popular as we are today. And for that, we all thank her for that. But the most important thing she did for me is give me that girl right there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. I have to trust the mic. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Sue Ross. Um, the other half of my tag team, unfortunately, is ill and is not going to be with us today. So I'm going to try to, I think, I, although I think a lot of the things she was going to uh, say have been covered in the talk about first class so far. Um, I'm here as a uh, close family friend. Uh, oh, you're going to, okay. All right. And <laughs> as you can tell, I'm not used to being on this side of the camera. Uh, <laughs> but I'm also here as, as uh, um, a uh, uh, sort of a, a deacon in the Church of Maynard Jackson. Um, Maynard was our first black mayor, but he was a champion of minority and female businesses. And I spent a large part of my city career working with the minority and female business program. Uh, and um, believe me, we were, we, were, we were missionaries for minority business. Um, Bunny took the skills that she had learned as an organizer with EOA um, and as a um, uh, public relations manager uh, as, 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 and, and combined them. And she developed, she took a, a, a company that she had formed with friends to, to do bus tours and turned it into one of the first woman-owned, minority-owned, uh, full-service public relations organizations in the country, first class. And she did that for 35 years. I mean, that was an amazing accomplishment at a, at a time when that business did not include blacks or women. Bunny took a little company and made it made magic for for organizations and uh, institutions all over the world. Um, she uh, was an organization woman. 
I worked with, with Bunny in, in a lot of organizations, but primar primarily the 100 uh, Black Women, the Metropolitan Atlanta Coalition, 100 Black Women. You all could, could stand just briefly. Um, you, don't, you don't just stand and sit down. Yeah, that's, that's good. Um, okay. We were, we were founding members of, of the, of the uh, Atlanta chapter, and Bunny was the third president and was responsible for a lot of the signature programs of, of uh, 100 black women, including uh, Gourmet Gents and the uh, For Sisters Only program that we had for, for a number of years uh, in cooperation with V103. She just took those connections from everywhere and put them together and, and made, the, made the magic work. Um, I also see uh, two more of her organizations here. I see the Lynx, who are, are seated are immediately behind 100 black women. And her, her, uh, her beloved sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, all the ladies in red there, yes. Um, but Bunny managed to be a consummate um, servant leader through all of these organizations. She served as president of all of them, and Jack and Jill too. There's Jack and Jill mothers back there in the, also. And, and she served at one time as president of all of the local chapters. Uh, and um, so she had an amazing ability to combine business and, and community organizing into that sense of acumen. Um, and then, you know, they, they say uh, in, in uh, in Matthew 7, 16, that by your fruit you will recognize them. And the fruit of Bunny Jackson Ransom are outstanding young men and women who continue to make an impact on this community and on our nation. I am I'm indebted to Beth and Brooke and Buzz and Ray for being part of their family, um, for being part of the Southwest Atlanta family, for um, but um, as, a, as, a, as a single mother, most of the time, <laughs> Bunny managed to combine business and motherhood and bring up the most incredible children you would ever want to see. You know, they're just, they're, I'm proud to have them as my friends. So when I think of, you know, Bunny, I, you know, has often been described as a, a force of nature. And I would have to, to say that as well. Um, she, but I, when I want to describe somebody, sometimes I'll go to poetry. And in this case, I'll go to Mari Evans. And Mari Evans has a poem called, I am a black woman. I am a black woman, tall as a cypress, strong, beyond all definitions, still defying place and time and circumstance, assailed impervious, indestructible, look on me and be renewed. And as we look on the life of Bunny Jackson Ransom, we all can be renewed that she has, has walked this way and blessed our lives. Thank you. We pray for the children even as they come. showing my sisters that I'm organized with my words here. They were a little worried. <laughs> they were just a little worried. So in the 1800s, a group of all-female warriors protected the African kingdom of Dahomey with skills and fierceness unlike anything the world has ever seen. Bunny Jackson Ransom was such a woman. Good morning. I'm Maynard Holbrook Jackson III. And as my father used to say, I'm a descendant of over 150 years of Baptist preachers. But I promise I won't keep you long. <laughs> they say everyone is born with gifts to bestow to others. 
My mother's biggest gift to me was that she never gave up on me. She knew how to be kind, but stern when needed. She was a cheerleader for all whom she loved. For me, she was a force of nature. Again, that's true. She was a force of nature that knew when to be as gentle as the wind. She possessed wisdom that she graciously shared with her children and grandchildren. I'm incredibly blessed to have had 52 wonderful years of witnessing up close and personal a real woman king. She was my avenger. If you knew my mother, you knew she had an innovative and powerful spirit. I'm in awe of her ability to build multiple businesses how she traveled the world. Egypt is a place she told my wife and I we have to go. So true, but many others. She, she would always say, I can't imagine any place else I want to be. I want to see. I've seen everywhere. <laughs> okay, Mom, you've seen everything, and now you see so much more. Yeah. I mean, and we can all be in awe of the things she did in her, in her political life, her, her business life, but you really have to take a second to realize how she actually touched people. This has nothing to do with business, politics. She just gave of herself, you know? And that's something that we'll, I'll remember forever, you know? Okay, so get back to the script here. So where was I? <laughs> She was a wife, a mother, a successful businesswoman, an author, and a confidant and activist for her community. I would suggest everybody check out her book, Memoirs of a Life Well Lived. I know it couldn't have been always, I know it couldn't always have been easy, but I marvel at how she could pivot and break barriers and would never complain. She was a champion in so many ways. I can't begin to convey my gratefulness to God. Whew. For allowing Bunny, Jack Bunny Jane Hayes Jackson Ransom. <laughs> I like to call her Brunella Jane. Yeah, I really do. I can't begin to convey my gratefulness to God for allowing Bunny Jane Hayes Jackson Ransom to be my mother. No matter what obstacle, if she could see purpose in it, she was all in. Thank you, Mom. You'll forever be the voice in my head. We're our mother's children. We can't see. We can't see. <laughs> Many of you know our mother as a businesswoman, political advisor, and early influence on Atlanta's entertainment community, a pretty public person. But what you don't know is that she was actually a very private woman and a mom first and always. A great cook, a loving teacher, stern disciplinarian, stern, passionate cheerleader, and burner of the midnight oil. She never slept. <laughs> Wonder how she did it all? She, she never slept. slept. <laughs> and she kept an impeccable home. If you visited, you saw it. I still am in awe how she did all of these things. She was a mother who was fiercely protective of us, but also determined to not let us forget who we are and where we come from. She always said she didn't want to raise spoiled, entitled kids. So, as moms do, she had pearls of wisdoms to share, her bunnyisms. The first one, don't take yourself so seriously. For goodness sake, get a sense of humor. <laughs> don't make yourself common. 
You don't have to be everywhere all, all the time. time. <laughs> People should so, miss you. That's right. You are not laying around this house while I'm working. <laughs> Go find a job or at least volunteer somewhere helping somebody. Don't procrastinate. Do it now. now. <laughs> Do it now. She loved us, guided us, and was our biggest support. She instilled in each of us a brutal honesty, if you know all of us, mm -hmm. a love for the arts, appreciation for quality education, the spirit of forgiveness, and a pride in being an African-American from Atlanta. It is through these qualities that we are forever bonded as siblings and that keep her forever in our hearts and minds. Mommy lived quite a life and she accomplished everything she set out to do. Breaking barriers and setting new standards each and every step of the way. With her bucket list complete, she wanted for nothing. We will miss her in this realm, but we honor her as one of the ancestors now. When I look out into this audience and in the sanctuary, and I see family and friends that my mom, mom loved and valued so very much, she had a deep, deep love for Atlanta and a fierce, fierce pride in her swats. For her, it was always about helping her community. So any celebration of my mom and her life is also a celebration of all of you. You helped out and influenced our family in so many positive ways, helping whenever and wherever you can, showing support and genuine love for us. How fortunate we've been to be raised in this beloved community and for the very special blessing that she orchestrated. We thank everyone for your kindness, your words and prayers are eternally grateful. Thank you to all of you for the love and respect that you showed to our mommy.
Let the church say amen. amen. Praise God for a life well lived. From politics and public relations to the arts and the humanities and education and civic life. Wife, mother, counselor, teacher. Come on, let's give God praise for Bernella, Bunny, Jackson, Ransom. Come on, let the heavens hear you rejoice. Give God praise for a life well lived. Amen. Praise be unto God. Come on, one more time. Give God praise for her. Amen. You may be seated. So we tried Ebenezer to lead in a service that honors the memory, comforts the family, and is efficient uh, in such a way that it doesn't become a burden to the family. So I won't be reading all of these letters. Yours either, I won't be reading these letters. <laughs> the family's telling me thank you. But I do want to acknowledge the many uh, letters of condolences from uh, the leadership, uh, both local and otherwise, and our city council member, Michael Julian Bond, council member Andrea Boone and family, council member Matt Westmoreland, council member Byron Amos, council member Marcy Collier Overstreet, council member Jason Winston, council member Amir Faroki, council member Jason Dozier, all sent uh, letters. Uh, we had that and also a resolution from our mayor. Is that right? A, mayor, a resolution from Mayor Andre Dickens. Also, we have a proclamation from uh, the Fulton County Board of Commissioners. So we're grateful for all of the leadership that has sent uh, letters. I understand that there is also a letter uh, from the office of Senator Raphael Warnock. I haven't seen it, but they, <laughs> somebody told me one was sent. So we'll make sure you get it. <laughs> All of the elected officials in the house, please stand. All elected officials. 
I saw a mayor. Stand up, mayor. All of our former mayors, I'm sorry, everybody. Elected, current, and former. Wow. Grateful for all of our former mayors who are in the house. Grateful, good to see all of you. We praise God for you. All of the clergy, please stand. All of the clergy. Thank God. Now, who are these women in red and black? <laughs> Members of Delta Theta Sigma, please stand. DST is in the house. Where's Jack and Jill? Stand up, Jack and Jill. We're grateful for our ministry of music today. So grateful um, for Reverend Dwight Andrews. I don't know many preachers who can preach and play this the way that brother plays. Thank you, sir. Tamika Patton will come as only she can. After which, a son of this church, pastor emeritus, leader in so many ways, Grateful for all of these families. I'm grateful for the members of this family, the members of Ebenezer. You know that we will be with you in the days ahead. Let us prepare now to hear the word of God from the Reverend Dr. Gerald Durbin.
tenderness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it is the presence of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face. And a day like today, you know that you're in the presence of someone special, someone holy, someone who was the essence of life. So we say, sweet Holy Spirit, stay right here with us, feel the presence of Bunny Jackson Ransom. Today ought to be the day of love, not tomorrow. Because we're here as one family. Eternal and almighty, divine, righteous God, giver of every perfect, excellent, and moving gift, we ask now that you would touch this breath and riches allow him to be used to bring some comfort, some joy, some peace to a family, to a city, to people that have seen the ups and downs of life, the mountains and the valleys. So God, touch this young servant. Give him what it is that you would have him to say. And when he said it, tell him, sit down and shut up. In the name of the risen Savior, we do pray. Amen. Good morning. I have risen and I get up now to come and bring you the benediction because the eulogies have already been given. I sat there and I listened. And when Reverend Jocelyn Dorsey had finished, there was nothing left to say. And then Bishop Ray Ransom got up and there was even less to say. I was checking it off. Then the children got up. Each one of them said something. And I said, turn to my good friend Walter Kimber. I said, what's left? He said, just say Holy Ghost. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Then I turned to Senator, now let me get this right, Reverend Senator. That came before the Senator. Reverend Senator Raphael Warnoff, whom we really thank you so much we need to give this man of God, this political leader, this man who stood the test of time, this man who has not bent down, this man who has not bowed, this man who has not opened up this plate to bring it. This is truly a man of God, not just a political leader, but a man of God. And we thank you, our good. Thank you, Reverend Maxwell and Vaughn. What do you say? when all has already been said. Maybe the only thing to do is do something that we used to do in the church, go to the Bible. And I'd like to look at a book written by the Judge Samuel, 
Judges, the fourth chapter, verses four through five, when it reads this way, Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lebedoth, was leading Israel at the time, and the Israelites came to her to resolve disputes. Judges, the fifth chapter, verses five and seven, says this, the village life in Israel had ceased until Deborah arose, arose, a mother in Israel. So I'd like to speak this morning briefly, and it said so interestingly as I was listening to people, a title, a prophetess, a wife, a mother, and a warrior. That's what makes a first lady. That's what makes a first class lady. We some today by Bernie Jackson. Jackson. This operation reflects the life and legacy of the first class lady. Jane Haynes from Lewisburg, North Carolina, was always proud of her humble beginnings. And she would say that this was the foundation for amazing life. As has been said, we all affectionately call her Bunny. However, today's special recognition service, I want to remember, reflect, and eulogize a prophetess, a wife, mother, a warrior, who no one can deny was a first-class lady. She was first-class lady who was also the first lady of Atlanta. This is a daunting task to me today, as I shared with my colleagues, as I watched the children, as I felt the energy in the room. It was overpowering, and I wondered why did I have this challenge. When first asked, I was humbled, shocked, surprised, then grateful because to be able to share a thought about the personality of this iconic woman and all of the things in those clergy behind me can attest to this, and maybe some of you, sometimes God will appoint you to do something and you feel ill-equipped, you feel overpowered, you feel that you can't do it, and your limbs shake and your eyes water up, but God will always give you the strength. And when you're in the presence of a lady like this, when Brooke and I were in the room when she passed, it was the toughest day of my life because exactly the same day, four hours difference, my son passed in my arms. And sometimes, and only one year before, my wife passed. And I said, how much can you take? But I say to the family, God will enable you to get through this because your mother was a powerful, saintly woman who knew what she wanted to do, and she did it her way. So you all find strength when you don't think that you can have the power to go. I got nervous, I called my daughter last night, I said, Nia, I'll be standing before a senator who's a powerful preacher in a great church with all of the dignitaries. What do I say? She said, Dad, say about 15 minutes and sit down and shut up. <laughs> in keeping with our eulogy tradition, I wondered as I prayed about what to share, and I, I questioned, was there anyone in the Bible, any character similar to Bunny. Can Bunny Jackson's life be encapsulated in a few short fleeting moments between the invocation and the benediction? Can her accomplishments be further appreciated and summarized in a small current time capsule? And I was led to the book of Judges written by Samuel. During that time and during that era, there were no women who were judges. Everything was a male-dominated society. And here this lady was who became a judge in Israel. In those days, the judges or the kings, they had the final word. They spoke for God. And they were all men except for one woman who was personally handpicked by God and installed as a judge, a problem solver, a resolver of conflicts, she was the only female judge and called a prophetess. She was anointed to deliver the children of Israel from the oppressors and all of life's dangers. You see, wise leaders are very rare. They accomplish great amounts of work without direct involvement because they, they, they know how to work through other people. They are able to see the big picture that often escapes those directly involved. So, 
real rare leaders are good mediators, good advisors, good planners. Deborah fit all of these qualifications in the life of Bunny. Our honoree parallel that. And I asked some of the great biblical scholars, and I went back to research, and many of them felt that the most powerful woman in the Bible was Deborah. Bunny had superb leadership skills and a remarkable relationship with God. In our text, we find that Deborah was described as a prophetess who was the wife of Lepidoth and the leader of Israel. Samuel later described Deborah not only as a person whom God trusted, but a loving wife. And she, he wrote, village life was dead until Deborah rose as a mother of Israel. The nation of Israel was continuously being attacked from all sides because they had disobeyed and were not faithful to God. The king of the Canaanites, King Joban, was allowed by God to come in. Whenever we disobey, whenever we are non-faithful, God will come in and allow something to come in to bring us back into the position where his love can show and be powered into our lives. That was going on at the time. God looked around and he said, I got a few men out there, but they ain't doing nothing. They're sitting around there, walking around, elevating themselves, but I got to pick me somebody that can do it, somebody I can trust, somebody that can articulate what it means to me to come back. So he found Deborah. God handpicked Deborah, a prophetess, a wife, a mother, and a warrior who obviously was a first-class lady to defeat the Canaanites. And guess who she chose? This lady of antiquity, when she became the judge. I'm not making this up. Go back and read it. She chose as her top general, Barack. <laughs> Barack was her leader. Can you imagine that? I'm talking about the parallelism between Bunny and, and, and Deborah. She chose Barack as her general. Said I, and Barack said, I'll fight wherever you want to go, but you've got to go with me. And she, being the kind of leader that, that was always there, she said, I'll go along with you, Barack. I contend that Bunny Jackson Ramson was that exceptional leader who was chosen by God from Lewisburg, North Carolina to make a significant contribution and difference in changing the lives of those whom she touched and changing the lives of those and made them more productive. Bunny's life was unique and extraordinary of her prophetic futuristic ability to assemble diverse groups and assist them to resolve their personal and professional challenges. Bunny was energetic effervescent, and had the ability to empathize and then synthesize people's dreams, goals, and aspirations so that they could become successful. There is nothing better than a catalyst. And for those of you who are chemistry majors, you understand the concept of the catalyst. When you've got two different elements, a catalyst is put in between the elements and you raise what we call the delta sign or heat, delta meaning heat, and the two groups would come together and the catalyst would bring them together. And then if you went back to find out what the new element was, you couldn't find the catalyst. Bunny was the catalyst between a lot of different groups and a lot of different people and a lot of different organizations. And after she just sit back in her own inimitable way, she was a perfectionist who demanded and expect you to do your best. Why? Because she always did her best. She didn't accept excuses. She might have accepted some excuses from some of the children, but I believe they'll tell you now, Bunny took no prisoners. Bunny did not let you slip and slide and hide. She would be there when you thought you were going into your hiding place, and she'd be there, what are you doing in here? Get out and get on the case again. She was a prophetess, a wife, a mother, and a warrior. Being a first-class lady is not an easy task. Being a first-class lady as the first uh, lady of Atlanta was even more challenging. It's so easy when we see people who are famous, when we see people that have a certain degree of celebrity, and we try to identify them. I wish I had their life. I wish I had her money. I wish. But to be a first-class lady and a first lady of a city, it is an awesome responsibility. Off time, she had to forego her own dreams. They became challenges in her life. Her personal goals were questioned, and her missions and 
purposes for succeeding closely scrutinized by everybody around you. Everybody wonders who you are and what you're talking about and the jealousies that can choke your life out. But she rose above all of those things because she was a first class lady. When they come in on every side of your life, if you want to have a first class life in your life, when the winds of adversity come on you, shake them off. Do like the kindergartners say, speak to the hand because there's a God that will carry you through when everything else begins to fail. She's the first lady and she was in the shadow of a large leader at the time. So her personal goals oft times were challenged. But because she was a wife, because she was a mother, and because she was a prophetess, she could always stay connected to God. When one faces odds like that, you feel life can be a war zone. And whenever you've been in a war zone, then you need to be a warrior. So with all of the attributes, she had to become a warrior because every day she lived in a war zone on top, to the left, to the right, with entertainment, with all of the contracts, with all of the organizations. And then just being a black woman trying to make it in a world that's so divided on sexism. She was a warrior. It's interesting, uh, a lot of people talk about, well, she made it because of the man she married. Bunny was already a quite an accomplished person, a lady on her own right when she met Maynard. She didn't meet Maynard to make her. Pfizer's kept her own, said she made Maynard. You see, so, uh-oh, the truth is somebody go, somebody, maybe get my car. Yeah, all you men out there who think you made it, you, it was that woman in your life who was a neck that made you do. She was confident. She was a consummate example of how to keep in perspective all the rules and the public assignments to do it, she had style, she had class, she had professional dignity. Few people could have gone there to the school and graduated. Then, as you've already heard, as I was checking out my list with the EAO here in the city, formulating first class uh, companies to bring people together. And I think one of her classic words that you can always say, and I think the greatest compliment that anybody can give you today is this, you know what? You make me feel good about myself when I'm with you. Bunny made you feel good when you, you, you waited around for that add a boy or add a girl after she beats you up. <clears throat> after she talked about you, she said, now you know what I'm talking about. That's good, I like that. She said, thank you, and you started like a little child thanking her. But she took you down where you needed to be. When, 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 when uh, the black mayors needed to, to come up, I see Keish and Kasim and other mayors who are here. She regenerized the black mayors because they were catching so many uh, stern kind of contributions across the country that people didn't know what mayors were doing. Bunny came in and for many years worked with the Black Mayors Association. She managed the groups. And as I listened to uh, Brother Ransom talking, I thought about the singing groups I was a part of. And she was cameo on there, so I was a part of the Don Juans. And I thought I was really good. And I'm not trying to interview, but I always had to know, I stepped back to be a part of the, the group. But in all of the groups that she worked with, and all of the diversity, there were certain kinds of ethics that she put together all of her contracts, all of her meetings based around fairness, honesty, transparency, equality, equity, and justice. Another thing about Bunny, Bunny knew how to laugh and have a good party, have fun. She knew how to tell a joke. She knew how to take a joke. But you had to understand when Bunny was through joking, you better get yourself right. Because the joke time was over and it was time to take care of business. And she knew when to stop joking and you might think you keep on joking, but you learn soon being around her, Sue, when to stop joking. First class lady passed, and she did it her way. She even had the unmitigated gall after growing up to challenge the preachers in this city. Shanna, she came up and said, you all need to get your messages together. We quietly said, okay, miss. But behind the scenes, we said, what she know about that? What's she going to tell you? But she understood how to market the message, and she 
wrote the book, and when she wrote the book, Getting the Word of God Out, here's what she said. Faith means you have it in your heart before you have it in your circumstances. She further said, keep the faith and be grateful. Let me share a classic funny statement. If you do wrong, you need to fix it. You gotta ask, Bunny, how do you fix it if you've done wrong? Here's what she'd say. Express remorse, admit responsibility, make amends, and promise it won't do it again. She could say those things. She knew how to say it. She knew when to say it. She knew just how much to squeeze and just how much to release. And when you left her present, you were somebody different, somebody better, somebody that could stand, somebody that knew that you had been in the presence of a prophetess, a lady, wife, and a mother. That was the bunny. Tyrone always said that had the Moore's Ford Bridge died down, she came in and turned it around. In her autobiographies, which Buzzy referred to, Memories, Memoirs of a Life Well Lived, a lady, Sophie Burke Gibson, summarized it this way, and I think this summarizes her life. This is a soul-searching, searching, honest book. Bunny teaches us ladies to stand tall, to own our own brilliance, and spread the truth always from the heart. Would you agree with me this morning that Bunny Jackson ransom had a life as a prophetess, a wife, a mother, a leader, a marketer, a provocateur, a friend. And now she's taking that same energy, that same power, the same words that were articulated over her today. Can you imagine right now she's walking around in glory, in heaven, being who she is. And I hear her saying, wait a minute, hold it. Who's in charge of making sure the sound system's right when I'm getting my crown? What color is my crown? How many people are gonna be at the crown ceremony? Where are they sitting? Hold it, Peter, come over here. Let me talk to you a minute. He said, I've been up here a long time. She said, I just got here, but there are a few changes I need to make. Peter said, yes, ma'am, Miss Ransom. What do I need to do? She was there and she, from the beginning, that's who Bunny was. Bunny will be missed, but her impact imposing presence which made us all better will be forever remembered. Beth, Brooke, Maynard, Ray Vaughn, the entire family, you were blessed to have a prophetess, a wife, a mother, and a warrior. I thought about, was there a song, since Deborah exemplified her, was there a song that demonstrate the life of our honoree. The only song that I could think of was written by Charles Bidet and Paul Anka. And this is what I believe is a close that Bunny would say to all of us. And now the end has come. So I face the final curtain. My friends, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway, and more, much more than this, I did it my way. Regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do and saw it all through without exemption. I planned each and every charted course, each careful step, step along the byway. More, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times I'm sure you knew when I bit off more than I could chew, but through it all, when there was doubt, I ate it up and spit it out. I faced it all and I stood tall and I did it my way. I've loved, I've laughed, I've cried. I've had my fill, my share of losing, and now as tears subside, I fear it all so amusing to think I did all that. And may I say, not in a shy way, oh no, oh no, no, no. I did it my way. For what is a woman, what has she got? If not herself, then she has not. To say the things she truly feels and not the words of one who kneels. Let the record show I took my blows 
and I did it my way. Bunny, wife, mother, you did it your way. And I'm told that when this earthen tent goes down that God gave us five, five senses, sight and touch and feel and smell. But they say that the last sense that leaves this body is hearing. And I think, as Reverend Raphael said a few seconds ago, that right now, this is her crowning moment. She did it her way, and the hearing is still left while she's up on this plane. Somebody ought to get on your feet and give her a standing ovation for the life that she's lived. She did not bend. She did not bow. She did not break. She stood up for justice. She put up. She did it her way. And she will be a living legacy in the city of Atlanta and in the state of Georgia. Thank you, Bunny, Jackson, Ramson, for all that you have done and your life will live on in your children and your grandchildren. God bless.
Friends of the family, please stand. The friends of the family. On Jordan Stormy Banks, I stand and cast a wishful eye. Canaan's fair and happy land where my possessions lie. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Who will come and go with me to the promised land? I shall see. 